Hey friends, welcome back. So as you know, many pundits and health experts said that wearing facial coverings like a surgical face mask or even an N95 face mask is a very effective and science-based strategy to reduce the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 and influenza-like respiratory viruses. In today's session, what we're going to do is break down a new paper. This is a Cochrane Systematic Database Review that looked at over 78 randomized controlled trials and or a cluster randomized controlled trials involving over 610,000 subjects com cumulative combined. And what they found actually is the evidence does not support the use of community masking, even in a healthcare setting, as a means, as an effective strategy, that is to reduce the transmission of respiratory viruses. Now, I know for some of you, this is gonna be challenging to your beliefs and your biases. Roughly 30 to 40% of the people that I see out in public, this is in King County, Washington, wear facial coverings. Still, I see children at my daughter's public school wearing facial coverings when they're riding their bike to school. Presumably, these kids do not want to wear these masks, but obviously their parents are nudging them or cajoling them into wearing the facial coverings. I just got my blood work done yesterday at a local hospital, and I couldn't enter the hospital without putting on a face mask. And yet we have this new Cochrane review. And lest I remind you, I have a master's degree in nutrition, and I was taught by many professors that the, in terms of the hierarchy of evidence, evidence, a Cochrane systematic review is the top of the evidence hierarchy. And so if we really want to follow the science, we should actually probably trust something like this. Yes or yes. I mean, do we want to trust someone who is a, uh, a, a an anchor on a television network or a, a bunch of scientists from all over the world? These scientists, uh, some are from Canada, the US, Denmark, Australia, the UK, this is not, you know, a, a conspiracy theorist journal. And so I want to share with you the evidence because, again, I see so many people diligently wearing these facial coverings. I saw two people just yesterday. It was a nice sunny day out wearing their face masks and N95 while they're walking their dog outside. OK, and the, the reason why I want to share this evidence with you is I have this belief that we only have so much willpower during the day. And if we're spending all of our willpower on hand sanitizer and wearing masks, we're probably neglecting other areas that could actually improve our metabolic health and reduce our risk for dying from cardiovascular disease or cancer or, or contracting autoimmunity or developing dementia. So I really care about people's willpower and I strongly believe that if you're focused so much on covering your mask and using hand sanitizer, that you're probably neglecting other areas of your nutrition, fitness, and sleep. So let's dive into this. Again, as I mentioned, this was published in the Cochrane uh, Database Systematic Review. Uh, again, very high impact journal here. The title of the paper is Physical Interventions to Interrupt uh, or Reduce the Spread of Respiratory Viruses. And they looked at a few different aspects of reducing transmission. And um, most importantly, they looked at uh, masking in general, using a surgical mask compared to no mask at all. Then they had another cluster and they looked at N95 masks versus just surgical masks or no mask at all. And then they looked at hand washing and hand hygiene. Okay. So specifically talking about surgical mask versus no surgical mask. What they found here, looking at the randomized controlled trials and the cluster controlled trials, uh, they they looked at, um, uh, again, total here, 610,000 subjects in, in these different um, uh, studies that they had and specifically comparing surgical masks versus no mask at all. This involved 12, tr 12 trials, 10 cluster RCTs comparing medical surgical masks versus no masks to prevent the spread of viral respiratory illnesses. Okay, wearing masks in the community probably makes a little or no difference to the outcome of influenza-like illness and or COVID-19 like illness. And the risk ratio here um, was 0.95 and the confidence interval uh, is 95%. Uh, and again, for those of you that are doubting this, um, this involved nine trials and 276,000 people. So again, you know, if this was a, a trial of 30 people versus 15, okay, you could say, well, it's not big enough. Okay, we're, we're talking close to 300,000 subjects over nine trials. Uh, and they conclude, wearing masks in the community probably makes little or no difference to the outcome of laboratory-confirmed influenza or SARS-CoV-2 compared to not wearing masks at all, okay? And again, I, I a lot of you criticized me for not wearing masks over the course of the pandemic. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me because, again, how people are wearing these masks, especially early on, it was a handkerchief, uh, it was a homemade mask, 
Uh, oftentimes what people would do is wear the mask into the restaurant and then they would take it off in a crowded area and think they're safe. And I remember going to restaurants in Seattle because throughout the pandemic, I wanted to socialize with my friends and family. And I got reprimanded for just walking to the bathroom without a mask on. And again, those same people are probably still wearing the face mask because I've been out to dinner uh, in Seattle as of last week. And, and most of the servers and a lot of the people in the restaurant still wore the mask to go to the bathroom. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't need to tell you, you know, people would hang the mask on their ear. It would be on their chin. It'd be on their hand. Uh, I mean, so to think that that is actually uh, doing something protective, uh, it's it just, let's just use more common sense here, my friends. And, um, and, and going on to the comparing the N95 facial coverings, which again, I see a lot of kids sadly still wearing these uh, in schools and, and at, um, you know, sporting type events that I take my daughter to and, and so forth. I see a lot of kids wearing the N95 mask because the parent is trying to even give their child a better mask. Well, let's compare the N95 to just a medical mask. And essentially what uh, this aspect of the study found is, and this was mostly in healthcare workers, involving 7,779 participants, uh, what they found is the use of an N95 respirator compared to just a medical surgical mask probably makes little or no difference for the objective and or more precise outcome of laboratory confirmed influenza infection. Okay. So again, do these better masks offer even enhanced benefit? We know that, that surgical masks don't really do anything compared to no mask at all. And then we have the comparing a better mask to an inferior mask didn't really change the outcome at all here. What you see here is the, the risk ratio is 0.82%. So it's really not doing much of a major difference. So if you're uh, spending hundreds of dollars or, or uh, I don't even know how much these N95 masks cost now, but I know a lot of people have been stockpiling these things. Uh, we know that they're ending up in landfills, they're ending up in the ocean. Um, there's a lot of single use waste going on doesn't really do much. I mean, this is what the evidence suggests. Now, I know for some of you, this is going to be a hard pill to swallow because you've been, you, you believe that because the expert that you followed on Instagram or that your favorite media pundit said that, you know, even two N95s is better than, than just one. And so you're convinced that this, this must work. Well, my friends, lest I remind you that during the period of the of the pandemic, we're talking about January and December, uh, sorry, December of 2021, January of 2022 and February, when mask mandates were in full effect in LA County and New York, Washington, Oregon, all over uh, the country, right? mandatory mask mandates in schools, indoor settings, grocery stores, restaurants. This is when the highest case counts were experienced throughout the entire course of the pandemic. So if there was an effect, don't you think it would have been shown uh, by the data? And you can Google your state, Google New York City COVID cases. It peaked during December of 2021 and January of 2022. Okay, This is when most restaurants, many restaurants in New York City, not only required a vaccination card, a negative COVID test, and you had to wear a mask in the restaurant. Okay, So if all these things were so effective, why haven't we seen it uh, in, in, in just with our own eyes? And now we have, again, uh, a Cochrane database systematic review involving 610,000 subjects, finding little or no evidence. Now, here's what actually makes common sense and what was shown to be marginally effective in terms of uh, reducing transmission, and that is just washing your hands, which makes sense. I never criticize hand washing. You know, when I go to the gym and touch stuff, I come back and I wash my hands throughout the whole COVID uh, thing. You know, I, I encourage my daughter, we'd go to the grocery store, we wouldn't sanitize our groceries or anything like that, but we'd wash our hands. You know, you're touching stuff and it just makes good common sense because, you know, oftentimes we're touching our face with our hands and things like that. And, and guess what? Here's what the evidence actually uh, showed is looking at hand, uh, uh, hand hygiene. Uh, there was a marginal benefit uh, with an 11% relative risk reduction of, of contracting a respiratory virus, just washing your hands. Again, no one criticized hand washing. I think a lot of people are overdoing the hand sanitizer. You know, we see these on backpacks. Uh, if anyone's been on an airplane recently, a lot of people, the first thing they do is they they put the hand sanitizer on. And then, of course, they have a, the soda pop and the cookies on the airplane, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it is what it is. Now, so washing your hands seems like a good measure. It's not that effective. It's actually more effective than than masking. But again, we're talking about an 11% relative risk reduction uh, in terms of reducing transmission. So what do we make of all this? Well, the, the big question here is, again, in 2020, 
there was the Denmark, I think it's the Danish face mask study. And I remember reviewing that here on this channel. I received so many unsubscribes on that day, about a thousand people unsubscribed from the channel because heaven forbid I show something from Carl Egerben, I think is, is his name. He is the director of the, the, the uh, Society for Evidence-Based Medicine uh, at Cambridge. And uh, this gentleman published this study and he himself got censored on Twitter. Uh, lest I remind you that Cochrane, again, it, in terms of the hierarchy of evidence is, is at the top of the top in terms of looking at systematic reviews of RCTs and cluster RCTs. They got censored by Instagram uh, for th not recently, but th th this was uh, during the pandemic. So we have this situation where uh, some people have a very hard time disentangling their political biases from evidence, yet they call their political biases science-based. And so I think it's really good, uh, no matter what side of the political spectrum, um, I, I generally fall more towards a libertarian, uh, do what you want to do as long as you don't harm other people. Um, that That's sort of my perspective. So you know where I'm coming from. I, I see, you know, on the left and the right, people are are very biased on, on, on all sorts of issues. And I think it's good to going forward, disentangle your political biases from, from science. We need to keep science in its own sort of track or trajectory uh, where we're constantly questioning things and, and debating things and not censoring scientists or journals for publishing science. Uh, that, that's just not how we're going to progress as a society. So I think it's important that we recognize that, recognize that our biases can get the best of us and we need to do some unlearning often when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to uh, reducing the spread of or transmission of viruses. We, we oftentimes need to do some unlearning and uh, always question things. And when you create a situation where something is unquestionable, that has a, a it smells, it, it, a hint of uh, dictatorial authoritarian sort of uh, politics and a uh, type of, of control over people. And I, I, that's just not healthy going forward, my friends. <clears throat> so I think it's important that we have an open mind, that we look at evidence. And I guess the good news is if you're still wearing a mask because you're terrified of of catching what is now a, a cold, really, I mean, this was actually, a, a, we're going to do another video on this. The, the all age infectious fatality rate of COVID-19 is much, 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 much lower than previously thought. This was uh, Dr. Iannotis over at Stanford and others had actually uh, did a, a global review of this. And so the, the all age IFR is 0.35%. And so what that means is that 99.97% of people who contracted this thing actually survived and didn't die. And, and there's, of course, a stratification based upon age. The younger you are, the of course, the lower the infectious fatality rate. And of course, all of you remember, uh, we closed schools, we closed parks. I had the cops called on me for bringing my daughter to a, a playground uh, during the pandemic because some Karen thought it was dangerous. And now we know that that the rate or her chances of dying were 0.0003%. Uh, and so I, I think we need to think better, my friends. So that's the, the, the take home message from this video. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know. I will link this study in the comments. And again, this we're following the science. Here's the science. Hopefully people will follow this and take that energy, that bandwidth that they were allocating towards uh, sanitizing the hands and wearing the mask and, and start to reinvest that into eating healthier foods, learning to cook, walking after meals, going to the gym, um, going to bed earlier, you know, getting sunlight in their eyes in the morning. These are things that we really should be focusing on, friends. So as always, I appreciate you tuning in. Have an awesome rest of your day and we'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.